they took spaces from. The corporation in this case is our old friend Asarco. These people are still around. Asarco was here, all right? These people were able to take away the hegemony from Asarco by uniting with class consciousness in mind. Straight out, our little manual of revolution. Closet with no window. But I'm happy, except that I'm being reminded you don't belong here. You have nothing to offer. And what's happening? What am I being, what's happening to me? I'm quietly being pushed out. Because I, who do I go to to say, you know what he said? He said, I have nothing to offer. And, and he said, and he'll say, excuse me, I never said that. He has a book. He's a high-level professor. I'm just a new kid on the block who's crying. El aire bendito. We have to think about those things, and that's a very unhappy young. <clears throat> Listen, if I'm in a pickle here. I don't know what to do, and I'm in my little office. And you know what I start doing? I start doing my work. But I don't only do my work. I do excellent work because I know I have to work twice as hard as Dr. McMahon and Dr. Little Man and, and all the other who were saying to me, now I did go into a uh, uh, department that was mostly white males at that time. We have diversified a lot since then. But that was just, you go into organizations and you get what you get. And sometimes it could be by your color or gender or your sexual preferences that you might be held back and you have to go above that. Now you could run away. I could run away. But then I thought to myself, and this is what my mentor said, how many before you have run away and nothing changes? Don't worry about it. Okay? You gotta do different things. And if you're not getting successful, you gotta move it. You gotta move it. You gotta try different things. So, anyways, with, 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 with some of the things that we're, we're looking at, at the leaders and relationships and writing and communicating, the other piece that is very important is, is to be committed to always making yourself better. All right? Don't get lax and think I made it. One of the biggest challenges I see with Latino professionals is they get that title. All right? I got the title, you know, I made it. And I'll treat everybody like shit. All right? I'm going to tell you a funny story. Always respect people. You never know where you're going to get information. I got a fellowship from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. I worked for Secretary Cuomo, uh, who is now the governor of New York. And he developed what was called the Community Builder Fellowship. So we were, they, they had about 500 people apply. I'll tell you another story besides that. But they only selected like, uh, like about 50 community builders. I don't know what I did, but I, I got in. So I, I helped start the Office of Rural Housing and Economic Development. When they asked me to do that, I didn't know what the hell I was supposed to do. You know what I did? I read. And I studied everything I could about economic development, colonias, farm workers, Appalachians, indigenous communities, the Delta. All right, so at least I could, you know, at least think I know what I'm doing. No one else would take the lead. And I basically, because I was prepared and I was reading, I overprepared, but I was ready. So what happened? <laughs> there are a few people that benefited from the jobs. I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm about to quit. All right, so a few things, a few, a few things happened here. What's what's one of the things that just happened right here? I got a little crowd. I got a little crowded. What else? Gentrification. Okay, you can talk about a process of gentrification occurring. What? Okay, there's diversity. What else? Y'all started talking, right? Y'all started talking to the builder real quick for a second. Maybe the person you were sitting next to before. Maybe you didn't like each other. Maybe you liked having a little space, right? So, what we're, what we're sharing here is that the Cross Bronx Expressway devastated certain communities in the South Bronx. Mad people were displaced. You know what I mean? The purpose of the Cross Bronx Expressway. If we go to the next the next chart is was pretty much right. So this is this is the cross Bronx Expressway right here, 95. So it basically cuts straight through the middle of the Bronx. Over here on this side, on the west side you have New Jersey. On the west you would have Long Island. I saw all these Irish immigrants and uh, Italian immigrants that Ron was talking about earlier, uh, who had left the Bronx in the 50s and the and the whole process of white flight. Everybody's familiar with the term white flight. Raise your hand if you're not. Cool, we got to say, all right? Okay, so white flight is the idea in the 1950s um, of, of, of white people leaving the urban areas into the suburbs, all right? 
any mode of transportation poses a risk um, of you ending up in deportation. So we said, we, we can't live in fear. You know, we have to do something about it. And, and, and we said that we have to live under this whole model of undocumented and unafraid. Um, and something that we did last year is we added unapologetic, because I think, I think what happens a lot is that, that when it comes to undocumented youth and undocumented young people, there, there's always a discourse of like, well, they were brought here at a young age, you know? Like, it, it's their parents' fault. And we said, no, we should stop putting that guilt and that blame on our parents, you know? Our parents made a sacrifice, you know? It was an act of, of, of love, you know, that they brought us to a country to live a better life. Uh, we know that we would not be where we are today if it wasn't for our parents' sacrifice. And we added, we added that to our messaging, and we called out legislators that were basically criminalizing our parents, and we said, that's not cool. You're not going to, to blame our parents for this. Um, so th through that, what we do is we, we do very symbolical, a, a symbolical rallying action. Uh, so every year around March 10, um, we have a week of action where it's, it, we call it coming out of the shadows week. Um, this year we said coming out of the shadows month. A what video we're is one of them, so you get a good sense of. Yes, I have been forced to live in for the past 20 years. I do not want to betray myself, my family, and the values of democracy, freedom, and justice that this country has taught me over and over. I am Hugo, I'm undocumented, and I'm no longer afraid. Señoritas, how's the day so far? Good. Sorry to interrupt the meal. <laughs> Provecho. The speakers were amazing. Nice, are nice. Amazing. Yeah. Very nice. Went to the workshop with oh. Cita mm -hmm. Lopez. Mm -hmm. A lot of encouragement and kind of letting us, telling us to get out of our shell and kind of start networking with other people. Cool, cool. Yeah. Very nice, Lopez, very nice. Uh, fui a la presentación de Rebel Diaz. 
Uh -huh. eh, sobre la historia del hip hop. Okay. ¿Puedes decir en inglés o en español? Como te salga. Ah, bueno, en español, ¿verdad? Que sepan que aquí hablamos español. Exacto, Somos muchas muy, gracias. Muy interesante, muy, este, muy entretenida, definitivamente. Uh, te ayuda a reflexionar en lo que te rodea, los estereotipos que tenemos de la música de hip hop y las alternativas que hay para para ayudar a los jóvenes a salir del ciclo de la pobreza que los están metidos. Very powerful. Sí, qué bueno, me alegro. Muchas gracias, gracias muchas gracias. gracias.